Hey, hello, how's it going? Welcome to another 20 Minutes Till Dawn video. It's me, Cranberry. How's it going? Hopefully you are doing well. Now, normally in these videos, I usually pick a character and then play a, play a run of the game. But today we're doing something a little bit different. This is going to be more of just like a, a general starter guide for someone who's maybe just starting out the game for the first time now. The 1.0 release of 20 Minutes Till Dawn just happened a couple days ago. So it seems to have brought in an influx of new players. So I figured it'd be a good idea to maybe try to help bring some people up to speed, right? I've been playing the game since it came out. I've played it a decent bit. Um, and uh, I, I think that while I don't know every single little thing about the game, I know most of the little things about the game. So I, I think I'm in a position where I can actually maybe give some advice to new players. So... Uh, we're going to go through the cast, we're going to talk about how they function, and we're going to give some examples of builds that work for the character, right? Uh, we'll talk about the rune page as well too, because that feels like it's probably a good thing to talk about. But let's start off with Shauna. Shauna is the de facto uh, jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none type character. She has no real definitive traits that lean her one way or another when it comes to build creation. There is one exception to that, which we'll talk about in a bit, but the general gist of the character is that all of her upgrades are just generically good. They just help you no matter what your build is. Her passive as well, rerolling upgrades once per level. Also, you know, just a neutrally good character. They can play any build effectively, um, and they do an okay job. Now, that being said... Uh, they are kind of boring, and 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 like a lot of characters, Shauna has a very big issue with seeing her character-specific perks in the right order. Now, if you don't know, I guess you know again. Keep in mind, this is supposed to be aimed at newer players. Every character in the game has three unique perks that show up from three of the bosses throughout the game. Um, one boss shows up at the 17-minute mark. One boss shows up at the like eight and a half minute mark, and then one shows up at the four minute mark. Um, and those, uh, those, those bosses will drop a little chest, you pick up the chest, and they give you one of your character's three perks. And the thing is that they can show up in any order. Shauna uh, has three perks. She has the quick learner perk, which increases her experience gains. She has the specialized perk which means that the next time she levels up she would actually get three copies of the next perk she takes and then her final perk is uh halo shauna's halo i think i forget what the actual name of it is but it's a, it's a halo and what it does is it adds three new perks to you per to your perk pool and uh once you collect all three of those perks you get a little halo on the ground that when you pick that up gives you a fire rate buff and a vision range buff and maybe a reload rate buff. I forget what the actual thing is. But either way, it's just a, a buff for your character, right? That's that's the gist of it. The problem with Shauna is that she really wants to see Quick Learner early. Because if you see Quick Learner at the end of the game, it's a little annoying, right? Uh, you you know, you waste all that time not having an, a bonus to the experience gains that you get. By the way, I should mention experience gains if you don't know. Okay, well, let's assume we're a 100% new, new player here. Experience... When you shoot an enemy, it's these little balls on the ground here, right? When you kill this guy, drops it on the ground. Oh, we killed one out of bounds or two, so it actually, a fun fact here, if you're new, if you kill an enemy out of bounds, the XP automatically gets picked up. It's a fun little thing there. There's that as well. And and that's, that's the character, basically, right? They have they, nothing, nothing super... Oh, I did say there was one exception. One exception to Shauna as far as having some uh, build potential, and that is Vision Range. Now, Vision Range, if you don't know, there is a series of perks in the game that revolve around your character's Vision Range. Uh, there's Glare, uh, and, and and I forget the things on the wall are actually, but they, they do damage just to anyone around you at a certain tick rate. And your Vision Range increases the range at which that damage triggers, and Shauna is one of the few characters in the game that actually can extend their vision range further than other characters. I No one else has anything that affects vision range as far as I'm aware here, right? So that is one thing that, that Shauna does have going for her. And while in the normal game, if you're playing the game normally, vision perks are not that powerful. 
for playing standard or quick play in endless mode Endless mode is the exception here. In endless mode, glare builds, aka the vision focus builds, usually end up being very strong. Right? So that's something to keep in mind. Shauna, very good for endless mode because of that extended vision range. Um, something to think about. Something to think about there. Now, that's Shauna. Let's move on to Diamond next. Diamond. You know, says it on the name right there. Starts with a very high HP. Most characters, you know, are in like the three to four range, right? Uh, D Dasher has two actually, right? Which is kind of interesting. But Diamond has seven HP. Very bulky to start with. In addition to that, she has perks that revolve around her health. She has her... She has one perk that whenever she heals, she gains an increase in damage. She has one perk whenever she gets hit... She gets an increase to her fire rate and reload rate. Uh, also, bullet size, I think, too. By the way, in the in the healing perk, not that it matters that much. But and her third perk is 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 kind of bad, so don't worry about that one too much. Um, but those two perks, in tandem, obviously are pretty strong, right? You take damage, you do more damage. When you heal, you do more damage. So the idea is you take damage to heal the damage, to take the damage to heal damage, so on and so forth. Couple different ways that diamond can be played, right? In that regard. Probably the most common build is just playing any generic gun. Uh, one of one of my biggest videos was was when I first started playing the game. I played diamond, I played the shotgun, and I just focused on increasing my damage through healing and and things of that nature. Right. One of the best ways in this game to heal is actually through the pyro mage uh, perk tree. If you don't know, uh, pyro mage is just like a on hit effect where you, they, they you ignite the enemies and you deal some damage over time. But the uh, the end the the capstone perk in that in that uh, perk tree actually causes enemies to sometimes heal you when they're on fire, right? Uh, and at the end of the game, that ends that, that that results in just a lot of healing. Basically, your character heals many many times pretty rapidly, um, and it causes you to get a lot of damage out of out of uh, out of diamond here. That's a pretty good build. Um, one build that I played for the 1.0 release here, which is actually now one of my favorite builds, I think it's very cool, is the Cyclone Sword build. Now, um, we haven't talked about evolutions at all yet, but every weapon in the game, when you when you reach level 20, will have an evolution now, um, which is just like a a, a weapon specific perk, basically, right? Each weapon has three of them, and when you hit that that level 20, you see one of the three, you, or you see all the three perks, and you get to pick one, right? Um, Cyclone Sword has a perk that really synergizes well with with Diamond's high HP stat, and that is, I forget, the, is it Judgment Sword? I actually forget the name of it now. I'm sorry about that, but um, there, it, there's a, there's a uh, sword upgrade for Cyclone Sword that gives you a 50% chance to smite now if you don't know smite is one of the well definitely it's holy arts is the name of the tree of the perk tree but there's an ability in the game called smite that revolves around the holy arts skill tree where it usually just up upon upon shooting the last bullet in your in your your ammo your magazine clip whatever you want to call it right when you shoot your last bullet it triggers a smite to nearby enemies around you right but Cyclone actually cr turns that smite effect into an on hit effect. And a lot of the, or not, one of the smite abilities uh, specifically deals bonus damage uh, equal to 10 times your, your, your health total. Or your, I think your current health, technically, not your, not your health total. Or not your max health total. Or your, your current health, it deals 10 times that damage, right? So starting with 7 HP with Diamond means that. If you take Cyclone Sword and you get that that smite related perk, you end up doing an extra 70 damage and in addition to the 20 damage by default. So it's clo it's almost 100 damage at 50% of the time on hit, which is I I know these are all just a bunch of numbers. Trust me, it's a lot of damage. It will kill pretty much everything in the game in about 2 or 3 seconds excluding bosses. Uh it'll 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 slice and dice everything up to pieces. So this this is a strong build, strong build for Diamond for sure. If you're trying to win with Diamond, that's a good way to do it. Um, 
just uh, just in general, same same as in a sense, Diamond is the same as Shauna, where the characters are kind of generically good. You can play anything, but there are some builds that do leverage that high HP for value as well. One thing to note as well, one of the new tomes added to the game, I should mention tomes now as well, if you're if you're unaware. Um, I mentioned before how there are three bosses in the game that drop uh, that drop character specific perks. There are two bosses in the game as well that drop non-character specific uh, perks that are uh, pretty varied, right? Uh, at the 15 minute mark, uh, there will be, depending on the map you play, there'll either be the reindeer or there'll be the, uh, the dog. One of the two shows up. And then at the five minute mark, each map has a, has a unique boss that shows up as well. And these bosses drop tomes, which usually have some sort of downside, but oftentimes also have a very strong upside to them, right? Um, one of the one of the, the tomes is a very, very strong for diamond. It is a tome that adds plus two flat damage to your gun for every heart that you have, every max HP you have, which might seem innocent enough at first, but trust me, can be very, very strong on diamond, depending on the weapon you're using, right? Um, so something to keep in mind there. Very good, very good thing for for Diamond is the is the I think it's Tome of Might specifically. They they just added a bunch of new tomes, so I haven't learned all their names yet. But that's a good one as well. Something to think about. Now, let's move on to Scarlet. Scarlet is the uh, flame focused character. There is one character focusing on each element, right? Like I mentioned before, though, Scarlet isn't the only person who uses the Pyro Mage perks, like. Diamond can use them. We'll talk about Spark and Abyss uses them as well sometimes, right? So Scarlet is our resident flame-wielding character. Uh, Scarlet has one character-specific perk that's so much stronger than the other two, I usually forget what the other two actually do, although I believe I remember what they do. I believe one of them increases fire damage at the, at the cost of losing some bullet damage, one of them makes burns last twice as long, so whenever you burn an enemy, the burn is set for a, a set duration. I want to say it's maybe two seconds, but it might be longer. I forget the actual time that a burn lasts, but she has one perk that increases the burn duration. She has one perk that increases burn damage, but her third perk is by far the most defining characteristic of Scarlet that makes her extremely strong as a character, and it's called Pyromaniac. And basically the way it works is that each time you do successfully ignite an enemy, you get a fire rate increase until you reload your gun, right? There are ways to uh, basically make it so that way you never have to reload your gun, so you keep shooting at a very high fire rate. Uh, it, it's very strong, it's very cool. If you're trying to build a, 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 if you're trying to do a run like that, you probably want to use a weapon that has a high magazine capacity by default. So something like SMGs, which have a ammo capacity of 24 at the start. You can play Flame Cannon, which has 12, but it also has way more ignitions, which is really cool. You can do Bat Gun as well, because Bat Gun attacks hit multiple times. Um, a lot of weapons you can you can do with the... Uh, I wouldn't do Salvo Knife probably with, with this, but that's whatever. A lot, a lot of weapons do work here, but like I, I would say the two biggest ones are Flame Cannon and SMG for, for Scarlet, right? By the way you want to build it and what's tricky about these types of builds usually is that you don't actually want to optimize for burn damage i know it seems counterintuitive the character is focused on burn and you do want to take all the various burn focus perks you want to take pyromage you want to take intense burn you want to take all of these things but you oftentimes end up doing more damage if you focus on on hit effects instead what i mean by on hit effects is uh um, well, I mean, I guess lightning as well as one, too, right? Uh, but you, you just want mainly, uh, death rounds, which is a synergy perk. You want, uh, dragon bond, which is the capstone perk of the dragon egg tree. You want things like this that add a flat damage to your shots rather than percent damage is ba is basically the general gist. Those tend to work really well, well with characters like this. You, you still, and again, you still want burn damage in there too, especially for the early game. But these builds oftentimes utilize that high fire you generate from Scarlet's unique perk, and then transition that into just doing outright huge amounts of damage quickly. 
Um, and it, in addition to, like I said before, uh, the general gist of this character is that you want to try to uh, never have to reload, right? You want to keep that that high fire rate going. Uh, generally, with the with the ethereal rune, if you if you know about this rune here, ethereal, it's very important for this, right? The idea being is that you shoot your gun, it gets to a tiny little bit of ammo, but it doesn't actually run out of ammo. And then you trigger Ethereal and your gun refills the ammo back up through uh, Energized, which is a which is a, a lightning perk. So a, a, an Electro Mage perk, right? So you've got Energized, you've got uh, I think it's Recharge is the is the uh, the pickup tree uh, perk that also gives you ammo back. There's there's various ways to refund your ammo. And, and you want to try to trigger Ethereal, refill your ammo back up to full. When Ethereal ends, kill enemies and trigger Ethereal again before the, en the ammo runs out. That's the idea of these Scarlet builds. That's, a, that's, a, that's how they operate, basically. And when you can succeed in doing that, they're very, very strong. However, you don't need to do this as well. It's not mandatory. You can... You can you can still trigger reloads and it's not like your run ends. What ends up often happening is that you get you get close to what I usually call going infinite, right? Where you just never have to reload the gun. You get close to getting infinite, but you don't quite get there. And even then you just reload the gun once and then you start it up and it takes, you know, two seconds to get your fire rate back up to where it was before. It do I don't know where the exact cap is on Pyromaniac, but it definitely, it definitely does cap out on fire rate increase. I should mention that as well. So um, it's not like you're going to crash your game because you shot too fast. But that is a thing. Uh, and yeah, that, that's that's Scarlet. Up next here is Hina. Hina's kind of a weird one. There are a lot of oddball builds. Some of which I'm not even sure if they still work, by the way. There was a weird bug which, that might have been fixed by now, but I'm not sure, where uh, the Magic Lens uh, perk, if you had hovered it over your Shadow Clones, for some reason the Shadow Clones that she created counted it as a object that could be buffed by the lens. And it would make it would make the clones gigantic, and they would like one shot everything. So it was very easy to do a pacifist run with Hina. If you were just playing with her, you get a magic lens early. You just create the shadow clone, and then you just dance on top of it with the lens, and you just create this gigantic shadow clone. Basically, I don't know if that still exists. However, there's a much cooler way to play Hina right now that I would recommend if you want to play the character, and that is also with the sword. You don't have to play the exact same build as Diamond does with the with the uh, with the smite sword. But here's a cool little trick that someone told me about recently that I think is very neat. So we're going to just hop into here again. And the way the sword works, by the way, I didn't really mention it before, right? Well, maybe we'll do a weapon overview as well here. But the sword, when you run out of ammo, it does this cool spin. And it can't be, it cannot be reloaded prematurely. You can't do it. Normally, you can hit the R button to reload early. You can't do it with the sword here, right? But... Hina has this little shadow clone dash here, right? She can do it like once every second or so. I don't know the exact timing for it. Maybe once every half second, whatever. If you run out of ammo and you just spam right click, the dash resets the the, the uh, reload. So you can, assuming you get no reload rate increases, you can spin the sword indefinitely, which is very cool. While we're here real quick, I want to show you one thing that I just found out about recently that I didn't know. This perk right here, Soul Powered, very, very strong, was changed to be a little bit weaker than it used to be, but it's still very good. Um, you get a bonus to your damage equal to the amount of Spirit Hearts you currently had. It, it used to be whenever you picked up Spirit Hearts, you got, a, you got a damage increase. Now it's all about keeping the Spirit Hearts and not losing them, right? This is still a very good upgrade, though, and, and I will show you why. We're going to get a little sidetracked here, sorry. Gonna get a little sidetracked. Um, hold on. In the rune page here, for a very long time, for a very, very, very long time, the de facto best rune in the shield side here was this growth rune. It was by far the best rune. These two didn't used to be here. These are actually brand new runes. They just added in the 1.0 release, but they were really, really bad in the past. Um, hold on, give me one second. 
Hi, hello, sorry, I'm back there. I had a very, very important work text I had to handle, so I paused the recording to handle that, but I'm back. But I, I have completely and totally lost my train of thought. I think we were talking about these, these runes down here, I believe. So I'm gonna just try to go where I left off. I believe I was saying that these two runes here used to be absolute doo-doo trash dog shit. They used to be horrible. And by default, you would just always take growth on your runs. However, with the changes to soul powered now, uh, body and soul does seem pretty good. Because it effectively, assuming that you see uh, soul powered on your run, this is effectively like a 50% like a increase to your, to your gun's base damage. Which is good. That's a pretty, that's a sizable increase. That's a pretty good. I think for a lot of builds, this is actually going to be the, the better pick between the two now. But not always, not always. Not definitively. And then Windshield, it's cool also, but not that useful. Um, anyway, whatever. Let's move on. That was just a cool little thing I wanted to point out. Hina, Sword, very neat. You can play a more summon, fo summon focus build too. If you're trying to get the pacifist achievement, this is a pretty good character to do it with. Um, but yeah, uh, let's go on to spark. What, what, what is there to say about spark that hasn't been said before? This is a lot of people's favorite character. Um, she's, she's good at pretty much at every level of the game. She's very good. If you're new to the game, she's very good. If you're trying to get a new, uh, high score for kill count, which is something that people, some people do care about. Um, the character is just all around strong. However, you know, there, there's some important things about Spark that you have to understand that I, for a very long time, didn't understand. One, it is extremely important, extremely important that you get the Electro Mage uh, perks ASAP. Because, as you see here, Spark's Lightning has a base damage of 5. The Electro Mastery perk, the, ca the capstone perk in the, uh, the Lightning skill tree... Uh, gives you a flat plus 12 to all of your lightning. So all of this lightning that, that Spark is generating that does 5 damage normally now does 17 damage, which is a really doesn't seem like much again, but is a very big increase to your overall damage, right? So that's something I just did not understand for the longest time about Spark. It's very important about the character. So if you're playing this character, you do want to do that. Similar to Scarlet, uh, Spark cares about triggering on-hit effects. It's very important for her. While she herself doesn't generate a high fire rate like, like Scarlet does, she makes up for it by having innate ammo regeneration, right? The fact that she creates so much lightning means that combined with the Energize perk in the, in the, uh, the Electro Mage skill tree, um, that will pretty much make just about any gun be able to shoot infinitely. For a very long time, the, the meta for getting a high kill count was just playing Spark, and actually taking the mini clip perk to reduce your magazine size down to one. And then just, you would shoot one shot and then you would create enough lightning to pretty much guarantee reload that shot back immediately. And you would just shoot, reload, shoot, reload, shoot, reload. And it would also trigger reload effects. So uh, previously, uh, arrow magic would trigger on, on reload instead of uh, every two seconds. That one's a new change in 1.0. But uh, previously, you would just shoot, and you would reload the gun instantly, and then you would shoot it again, and you would trigger uh, a lot of reload effects in addition to a lot of on-hit effects, and it was a, a, it's, it's still a good build, but it was stronger before. Uh, it's still a solid character. You can, can pretty much also play about any weapon. I mean, you generally want to play, you know, the natural choices are like SMG. You can play Flame Cannon as well. One thing I mentioned before, I, I believe, is that Pyromage also works well with Spark, and the reason for that is the Overload Synergy perk. If you want, we can take a look at that real quick. Hold on. For some reason, it would be a nice quality of life upgrade if you could just see all the perks in the menu here. But when you pause, you can look up the Synergy perks. You can't look up the normal perks, which is, again, a little annoying. When you look at the Synergy perks here, you can see Overload requires Electro Mastery and a Fire Starter. It requires both of these perks. And it is another very strong effect for a spark because she creates just so much lightning that, you know, you're going to trigger overload a lot of the time when you shoot something. So that's just a cool one. Very good perk. Very neat. Um, one thing that we haven't talked about yet either is that uh, a lot of these builds, I should mention, 
Uh, even if they're not like damage focus builds, right? They're on hit focus, or even if they're summon focus, you want to take the the power shot skill tree because it has access to the uh, the perk Splinter. Splinter did get a nerf in 1.0, but it's still a fairly strong ability. Basically, the way Splinter works is that whenever an enemy dies, it shoots out three bullets that have all of your various on hit effects on them still. If you're if you're a bat gun, it actually shoots out bat shots that will still track enemies for a little bit. Right, it's it's a good perk that that almost every build wants as well. Something to keep in mind. It does always trigger those on hit effects, uh, and I mean that's that's pretty much Spark in a nutshell. There, she's not too complex of a character, but she is good no matter basically no matter what you build. You probably don't want to do like grenade launcher, although you could if you wanted to. You don't want to do something like salvo knife either. Um, but you can play pretty much any weapon of this character, and they'll do pretty well. Um. Moving on, we're going to go here to Lilith now. Lilith, for a very long time, was a dominant character in, in, the, in the, the high kill count meta, we'll call it, right? She was very good at racking up huge kill numbers because Batgun, which still is very good, but Batgun was like the de facto like kind of best weapon in the game before the evolutions were added. It was really, really strong. It still is really strong, but Lilith, Lilith with Batgun was just kind of brain dead easy. And was and was very good that being said it's still good but we now have a couple of summon or i guess just two really we have two summon focus weapons we have bat gun and we have watering gun both of these guns now care about summons lilith kind of a a hard committed character to playing summon builds so uh something to keep in mind there but you i mean you you can, in theory, play other weapons too, I suppose. But I don't, I don't know why you're playing Lilith if you're not playing one of these two guns, basically. And I would say Batgun's the, the pretty clear and definitive best gun for, for Lilith. Because I feel like Watering Gun... You don't necessarily want to focus too much on the actual summon damage itself with it. But we'll talk about that later, probably, maybe. We'll see. Um, one thing we haven't mentioned really yet is, uh, is summons in general. Uh, summons can be strong enough to win the game on their own there is an achievement for beating the game without shooting your gun at all right that's generally done through the use of summons um so yeah um it's it's a it's a it's a she's the best lilith is probably the, the best character for summon builds summon builds can be strong but don't the one advice i can give you is don't rely purely on the summons to win the game for you right you should still take other upgrades. You should still try to increase your damage, increase your fire rate, things like that. Rely on the back gun to output damage as well. One thing I should mention too, actually, I, forgot, I think I forgot to say it. Spark, by the way, also really good with the back gun. One, one, I, I sorry to go back here. One mechanic I really want to talk about with Spark really quick is the actual wording on this effect. Your bullets have a 50% chance to call down lightning on impact, right? When I, when I, I misunderstood this as well when I first read Spark, I thought this was just like an on-shot effect, right? Every bullet you shoot has a 50% chance to make lightning. This is on impact. So if you have piercing shots, every time your shot hits someone, pierces through, hits another person, pierces through, hit another person, et cetera, et cetera, each one of those shots has a chance to trigger lightning. That's very important. I should have mentioned that before, and I apologize for doing that, or for not doing that, I guess, but... Um, Lightning, extremely, extremely important uh, that, that it, it counts piercing. Uh, the bat gun innately has bouncing shots as well. I think it's bounce two by default, but the bat gun also works really well with piercing, especially with cadence at the start, right? Uh, cadence, every third shot has infinite piercing. On the bat gun, this is really, really strong in the early game. That's where the bat gun's probably the weakest is in the early game. But this gives your bats infinite piercing. They just fly around and kill things in a single hit, basically, in the early game. It's really strong there. So both for Spark and for Lilith and for any characters using the bat gun, it's a pretty good uh, rune for you to use. Something to think about there. Um, beyond that, her, her character-specific perks just kind of revolve around just increasing your summons. Her, her passive ability to create spirits, generally irrelevant, except... For two perks. Two perks is actually very relevant for. The Pulsing Summon perk. And the, uh, I think it's Thunder Spawn perk. Which are uh, middle tier perks in the Trainer and in the Frenzy uh, perk tree. 
which are which are summon focus perks. Another another cool fun tip for new players out there, by the way. There are two perk trees in the game, the trainer perk tree and the frenzy perk tree that at first cannot show up in your run until you take a a summon focused perk first, right? So if you if you're playing back gun and you want to find frenzy or you want to find the trainer perk trees, you need to take at least one of the following. You need to take either uh, Ghost Friend, Dragon Egg, Magic Scythe, uh, Magic Spear, and maybe one more. I don't remember. You need to take a summon perk first. And once you take that perk, then the other summon focus perks will show up. So it's an important thing to note there. Um, so a lot of times for like a Lilith back gun uh, run, I, I might think Ghost Friend is not very good for the build. But I will take it just so that way I meet that 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 uh that that marker so that way the the other perks can show up in the perk pool. Something to think about there with Lilith, right? Is that um I don't know beyond beyond that Lilith is just is just good. She has um oh thunder spawns. I didn't mention I didn't mention why the, <laughs> I didn't mention why thunder spawns and pulsing summons are so good. Pulsing summons, if you didn't know, is a is a perk that just your 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 summons. Every now and then, pulse in an AoE around them. Lilith, these spirits she creates... Oh, hold on a second. These spirits that she creates count as summons. And while they do very little damage themselves, the it's very easy to fill up the screen with summons. And then when the pulse happens, which happens pretty frequently, it ends up like clearing the entire screen, basically, every like two seconds for you. Uh, very strong, very strong um, ability. And then Thunder Spawns on the same idea. You don't care too much about this damage it deals, but Thunder Spawns in tandem with the Energize perk, which refills your, your ammo for you. Uh, these together turn Lilith into like a mini spark in that she gets to shoot infinitely, right? Uh, just a pretty cool little combo there. Something to think about. Let's move on. Let's go to Abby. Abby is one of the most interesting characters in the game. Uh, she can, again, like a lot of characters, she can use basically any weapon, but unlike other characters, she often ends up being the best at most weapons in the game. Um, she's, her, uh, right click ability, I'll just show it to you real quick here, right? And, what do we, what do we use here? We'll use the back gun for now, right? Her right click ability is she spins in a circle and she fires shots randomly, but she fires them faster than normal, right? If you see this, this is her normal fire rate. Yada yada. She shoots them basically twice as fast, right, when she spins. So the idea is that, you know, if you have a, a gun like this, or a gun like, let's say, grenade launcher, or something like that, right, where you're just kind of just filling up the screen with projectiles and you don't care where they go, it ends up being very, very strong. If you hit critical mass with Abby, again, you just wipe out the whole screen. It's very, it's very easy. In addition to that, her her character specific perks are also very strong. One of them is a is a total wash. One of them is called I think Whirlwind, um, and it's not that useful. It like gives her a movement speed upgrade when she reloads. Pretty much, well, not literally worthless, but pretty much worthless as far as we're concerned because the other two. Uh, abilities she has for her character specific perks are very useful she has i believe they're called make it rain and uh bullet storm i believe the two per other two perks make it rain is she doubles her already doubled fiery on the on the spin maybe it's not doubled but either way she does double the the her her current fire rate when spinning right so she shoots even faster while spinning which is very good um, and her other ability is that she actually lowers her fire rate by, I want to say 30%, but she adds more projectiles to her every single shot that she does. So it ends up, I mean, arguably being net neutral, but oftentimes, at least in the early game, it feels net positive for sure. Um, she's, she's a very good character is, is the gist of it. Uh, one of my favorite builds for, of all time is playing ethereal with Abby and playing the crossbow. And the reason for that is, right, if you look at the, the stats on the crossbow, right, one thing might not stick out to you, but it's actually really interesting. It is tied with the flame cannon for the highest fire rate. 
right? It only has one shot in the in the magazine and it normally charges up, but it actually innately has a very high fire rate. So if you have Abby, I'll go to the pumpkin patch here for now. If you have Abby and you have Ethereal, what'll happen is, we do need to kill some enemies first here. It might take a second here. And it's not gonna be worth it, but I'm gonna I'm committed now, so I'm showing it to you anyway. If you have Abby and you have Ethereal, you will see the magic. Once we kill 50 enemies. Hold on. Also, I don't know, man. Oh, they changed it to Soul Shield, by the way. They changed the name. That's kind of interesting. It used to be like Soul Harvest or Soul Reap or something. I forget what it used to be. We gotta be close to 50 kills now. Are you there yet? Not yet. Soon, trust. Trust is coming soon for sure. This next shot will get there for sure. There we go. We're, we got. We have it now. Um, I think it goes for sure. So this this is the build, and while it might not seem that impressive at first, this is like again base level the highest fire rate in the game. Um. And, and the distinction it has versus the flame cannon, which again is tied, is that the flame cannon has pretty low range. The crossbow, as you can see, is shooting across the entire map. When you, you know, get to the end game, you are sh literally just covering the screen in arrows. It is very cool. And it's also like probably in like my top five highest kill counts ever for this game was, was, a, was this character with the crossbow. So it holds a very special place in my heart. It's a very cool build. I love it. But just that being said, Abby can play almost every gun in the game. It's very fun to do Abby grenade launcher. It's very chaotic, but she creates a lot of explosions. Arguably, the most explosions you can create, which is very cool, right? Every gun works. You can play shotgun. You can play shotgun with Abby. And again, with, with any, any weapon works with it because, again, when you spin... It's very cool. The only gun that like doesn't really work is 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 salvo knife. It's actually pretty disappointing. But again, just hop into your show you real quick. The right click does not work the way you want it to. The salvo knife, the way it generally works, right, is that you move around and it targets enemies for you, right, and then you left click and it shoots them all out. And you would hope that maybe you could target and then right click and it would shoot them a little bit faster, but maybe less accurate or something. This is the spin. <laughs> It's just, it's just way less impressive than just nor using the weapon normally. That's one where it kind of just doesn't work for. Um, but yeah. Just about every gun in the game, Abby works with. Um, very cool, very just baseline strong character. Because of her ability to just cover the screen and projectiles faster than almost anyone. The only character who can really shoot faster is Scarlet when she gets ramped up. Beyond that, Abby kind of just takes the cake there, which is very neat. Um, she can do cool magic bow stuff as well. I've had I've had runs with with Abby with the magic bow where I've I've managed to go infinite with Abby, and I will just spin for for minutes at a time, like just nonstop spinning. And then at the very end of the run, the way the magic bow works is that it as it says when you reload it, it recalls the arrows back in. I've had I've had runs where I've made so many arrows and then I recall them back in and it basically crashes the game almost, um, which is very cool and very neat. Um, so good character for that. Uh, also, good character for that is probably uh, if you want to crash the game, it's probably Spark is a good character as well because there's a there's a oh, what am I doing? There is a, an evolution for the magic bow that creates lightning on it as well, so you get you get very easily infinite ammo with this character and you can just shoot forever for like the whole game it's very cool um but it, it may crash your computer uh so be careful about that uh up next up next is yuki now when we talk about character strength there's two metrics that we should use to talk about strength right how many they're, 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 how, how well they can kill a lot of enemies and how likely they are to straight up just win or run which is not the same thing some enemies are very very strong but they end up winning the game and you'll look and you see you have very low kill numbers, right? Yuki is one of those characters because her abilities are all freeze focused, right? It's not so much that she kills enemies good, it's that she keeps them from getting to you and hurting you. And if you're trying to just win the game flat out, there are two characters who are far and above the best 
And Yuki is a, is a squared, is a, is, a, is, a, is a solid number two, but not quite number one. Dash is the number one character if you're just if you're just straight up trying to win. But these two characters are, are also, if you're trying to get a high kill number, probably the worst characters in the game for that as well, which is kind of interesting. Uh, but if you're just trying to beat the game, play the game, have fun. Yuki, unbelievably strong character. Uh, and also, a couple of different ways to play the game, which is really interesting. Um, because... On one hand, if you have a very high fire rate, um, she she uh, the 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 freeze effect that the the butterflies do right. If you read the ability there, you can kind of just see it right. If they're already frozen and the butterfly freezes them, they instead take damage equal to your bullet damage. So if you have a high damage gun, you end up doing a lot of damage, right? But most high damage guns have a low fire rate. The other way you can play is a high fire rate and you end up just instead creating a million butterflies and just perma freezing the map instead both ways are very cool and very valid ways to play it she's got a lot of build options all of her perks just kind of revolve around the butterflies basically um one of the perks creates two butterflies instead of one one of the perks doubles the rate at which her butterflies trigger the freeze effect and one is just a bonus damage to enemies who are already frozen all of which is very good right uh, I am a big fan of like Revolver Yuki because it's a good balance of having a decent fire rate and also having a high base damage. But all of these weapons basically work for Yuki. You, you kind of just can't lose no matter what you do. Maybe like Cyclone Sword is kind of like anti-synergistic, but even then you can probably still win with Yuki. It's very easy. But all, all, just all of the guns work for her, right? It is very cool. It's very neat. Um, up next is Luna. Now, for a long... I, I like Luna. For a long time, Luna was just the de facto worst character in the game until until they added Haster. Then, Luna became the second worst. But Luna's actually pretty cool right now. Luna's in a really neat spot. For a very, very long time, Luna wanted to play the grenade launcher. Luna wanted to use the grenade launcher because the idea of her black holes grouping enemies up and then you hitting them with the grenade was very cool and very good. However, it was very anti-synergistic with Luna's abilities. The problem was that Luna had one ability where her black holes would also shoot out projectiles. And it was very, very easy for these projectiles to shoot at Luna and hurt herself with a grenade launcher. Now, I haven't, I haven't done this build yet, but I'm going to be doing it pretty soon, I'm pretty sure, where I play Luna and use the new grenade launcher evolution that makes you immune to the explosions. It's going to be very neat and cool and fun, hopefully. But um, now that's a thing you can do. So now with that in mind, I think that grenade launcher Luna is actually really cool. But Luna is a character that you can play, again, with pretty much any weapon. It doesn't matter too much. I guess Cyclone Sword's kind of a synergy where you trigger the reload and you make a black hole. And then you intentionally spin the sword in the black hole to kill all the enemies in there. It's not terrible. Doesn't seem super necessary. Um, but this is the one that I want to play now with Luna. Now that there's this new change. I haven't actually done it yet, but I think it'll work really well. Luna also works well with shotgun. Works well with, like, revolver, too. Um, you know, things like that. Generally speaking, you want to group enemies up and hit them together with, like, a big explosion or, like, a big shotgun blast or something like that instead. Works pretty well. But other than that, though, they're kind of a weirdo character. Their their abilities revolve around the black holes as well, where one of them one of them revolves around having a high base damage. Right? It's like the, the black holes implode on themselves and deal damage equal to your bullet damage. One of them is the black holes when they end, they also shoot out a projectile, which is where the grenade launcher danger was. And then one of them is you just create two black holes, one in front of you and one behind you instead of normally just one in front of you. Right? So weird character one of my like i design was one of my favorite characters in the game but just not that strong in general be careful this one's going to be a harder one to win probably if you're if you're a new player but it, they're they're cool i like them up next is dasher dasher is i pretty much undisputed the strongest character in the game if you are just trying to win right if your goal is i'm gonna beat this game dasher is your character because they are extremely easy they, they they did get nerfed they used to be way stronger and even now that she's still an incredibly strong character right the deal is as you can see every 10 seconds you tr transform into a deer when you're in a deer form you're invincible and you murder <laughs> you just you just slaughter people it's crazy 
Um, it used to be, I think, every 50 kills. But the problem with that is that in the late game, after, every 50 kills is like a second. Right? You can kill 50 enemies every single second pretty easily. So it ends up just you go into deer mode, you kill everything, you go back to human mode for like a tiny little bit, and then you go back to deer mode, and you go back on your rampage, right? It's pretty obvious as well, right? It says the deer form is, is based on summon damage and move speed, right? So you just take those, play like the back gun, whatever is you want to is fine, and you're just gonna, you're just gonna destroy everything. I don't know what to say. It's a very simple character. The, uh... The character specific perks are all about like upgrading your deer form too. Then there's one that also gives you a little mini deer as well to follow you around, which is kind of cute. But the character is just, just kind of just in incredibly easy. So number one suggestion, if you're a new player, pick up, pick up Dasher and just begin crushing the game. One thing I should mention, a lot of these characters have like unlock conditions. At this point, I don't remember how I unlocked any of these guys. I, maybe you have to beat certain maps. I'm not sure. I, I was apologies for that. Um, but something to keep in mind there. I th I want to say Haster is unlocked by beating the temple, and then Rave is, is unlocked by be beating the pumpkin patch. But these ones, maybe you can just you can just spend runes to or whatever these are. Is it these runes? What are these? Are these souls? Does anyone know what the money? I, I have as you can see, I have a lot of money in this game. I don't know what it does anymore. <laughs> I don't know what it's called anymore. But um, yeah, uh, I think you can unlock them with that. Anywho. Anywho, up next is Haster. Haster uh, has the unfortunate distinction of being the worst character in the game. Pretty much bar none. They're just not good. They are a summon focused character because her tentacles do revolve around uh, summon effects. But they're just not very good. And the ca the, the character is just kind of bad in general. All, all uh, Stinky. If you if you really want to play a Haster, you should probably go for a more summon focus build, like a bat gun style build. But you're just gonna be like, why am I not why am I not Lilith while playing this? Or why am I not Raven? Raven Raven is basically Haster done correctly, right? Raven is another summon focus character, but unlike Haster, there's a sub theme for Raven where she focuses on curses as well, right? So, and, and while it, it might appear here at first that this is a curse focus character, in reality, they are a summon focus character, right? Um, that's just how it goes. That's just how it is. Um, because her, uh, her, her bird counts as a summon. And then there's a, there's a, there's a bat gun synergy perk that also revolves around curses. So combining it together makes the character extremely strong. Right? That's how you play Raven. You play Bat Gun. You play the you the the curse evolution on the Bat Gun. And you just go kind of sick trap tra you go you go crazy. Raven's actually really cool. Raven's like my probably like aesthetically like like maybe one of my like I'm gonna say second favorite character. I still like Luna a lot. Luna's sick. But Raven's also really cool. I like this character a lot. Anyway, that is all of the characters. I do want to go over the runes real quick here as well. And I do want to go over the weapons I didn't talk about too much because I did. I definitely leaned more into like talking about the bat gun a lot. There's other weapons in the game. And I want to talk about where they can be used as well if you're trying to win with the spe specifically with the weapon rather than the characters, right? Now, in the first tree here, we've got power, alacrity, which I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. No one's ever told me that I'm saying you're wrong, so whatever. And we have mysticism. Really, these two are both pretty strong. Mysticism's kind of the odd one out here. It's just not that good. You don't you don't need this. If you're playing like, because and the problem is that if you if you're playing a character that cares about this, you can also just take this and it's good for you, right? So that's neat. Um, but yeah, mysticism kind of just a stinker. Generally, go with power or alacrity, and then in the second tier, we have aftershock, elemental barrage, and close combat. Uh, Elemental Barrage is so strong that even if you're playing a non-elemental build, you should take this rune and then take Pyromage because that's a very strong effect. It's Like I said before, in the late game, it's very easy to kill 50 enemies. You do it like every second. So the uptime on Elemental Barrage is very, very high in the, in the late game of your runs. So it's this is this basically reads as a as a as a fifty percent fire rate, like most of the time, which is really strong. 
The other perks in this tree are bad. This is just stinky. The range on this is very short is the issue. It barely ever hits anything. And then in close combat, it's not bad, but Element of Barrage is overall better. If you're playing like some sort of glare build because you're and you're extending your vision range, it's worth considering this more so. But like, I just, I just go for Barrage always. I, I think this is kind of a bait, generally speaking, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, and then we have the, the next tier. Uh, we have Glass Cannon, Wild Magic, and Gun Glyph. Wild Magic is like kind of okay, but not that useful. Here's the thing, Glass Cannon is very strong. And it's gonna be a little bit weaker now, I imagine, because I'm gonna be taking Growth a little bit less, I think, now. But Growth and Glass Cannon made the downside of Glass Cannon basically irrelevant. It was very easy to heal back the HP you lost at the start of the game with, with Growth. And then the the damage increase is a 25% damage increase and 25% fire rate increase by default. That's just really, really strong. That's a good thing. I take this on like 99% of my builds, I think. Gun Glyph is a bait. I, I would... Here's the sad thing. I would say a lot of times you're better off taking Glass Cannon over Gun Glyph in pacifist builds. Gun Glyph is an extreme bait. It is so not good. Also, don't take this with a grenade launcher because it shoots grenades out still and it will still hurt you. Something to keep in mind there. Wild Magic, you can play this on like an elemental build as well. But here's the thing again, right? Uh, you can have this, right? Enemies die, they can spread their, their statuses. Or you can just shoot faster and create more statuses in the first place, right? So generally speaking, I just prefer Glass Cannon over Wild Magic pretty much every time. And then going into the last tree here, we've got Cadence, Ethereal, and Dedication. Cadence and Ethereal are both very strong. There are very tiny niche situations where Dedication could be cool, but the problem is, is that at least last I checked, it does not work correctly. And the issue with Dedication is that it specifically does not work correctly with Batgun. There's some sort of bug. I don't know what the issue is exactly, but for some reason, it like you take Dedication, you take Batgun, you take your first summon, and for a little while, it seems to be working just fine. But then it just it just stops working. I don't know why it stops working, but usually it's after your first level up, after taking your first uh, summon, it just no longer works for you anymore. So it's tragic, but um, this could be cool if it actually did work correctly, but it's kind of broken. It just doesn't work correctly. So between the two, it just, it just varies build by build. Like I said before, if you're playing like Scarlet, um, Ethereal is very good. If you're playing like Abby and you're doing like a spin to win build, Ethereal is very good. Outside of that, Cadence is usually the way to go. Um, the Infinite Pierce is very strong. It, it, it's kind of hard to, to, to like, it's just very good, especially if you're, it's kind of, it's kind of, a. you wouldn't expect it so much, but if you're playing like the SMGs, let's say you're playing Spark and you're playing dual SMGs, you kind of need Cadence because what will happen is that the, the, the dual SMGs do very little damage by default. And in the early game, you'll just get these giant mobs of enemies just stacking up together and you unload your entire clip and you kill like two of them. And then there's still a whole mob of them there. Um, Infinite Piercing lets you kind of just mow down those those mobs. I mean, even though it's only one in every three shots that it gets that Infinite Piercing, you'll you'll take them out pretty quickly if you have Infinite Pierces on the shots. So that's the idea, at least. It's very good. So, can't be understated. Very good perks there. Now, going over to the shield side, I will just, you know, temper your expectations here. They're generally pretty bad perks on this side of the tree. And there are some new ones. And they're also kind of bad. So on this side, we've got Vigilance, which is Vision Range and Pickup Range Increase. Kind of a snore. We have Tenacity, which is kind of cool. And you know what? I may end up playing Tenacity more. I'm just thinking about it now. If I'm take playing builds now where I'm where I'm taking Body and Soul, the, the, pro the problem with Tenacity previously was that it was hard to balance staying at half HP with growth constantly healing you. But now I'm thinking maybe I will take Tenacity for the fire rate increase, and then take body and soul as well with it. Kind of an interesting idea. Maybe it's something I'll think about in the future. So this has some potential. I need to test it more myself personally, but it should be pretty good. We've got courage, which is my just my default pick here, just because not for the not for the knockback, just for the reload rate increase. It's just solid. It's a good little upgrade here, but we'll we'll see about tenacity versus this. I'll have to do some more testing on that. 
Uh, we have now arguably the worst uh, line of perks in the game. We have momentum, we have agility, and we have seismic ward. Uh, these all just suck. Seismic ward is like especially bad because you'll get times where an enemy gets right up in your face and the seismic ward is supposed to knock enemies back. But if they're really in your face, it'll actually kind of push them into you instead because it, it knocks them. It doesn't knock them back away from you. It knocks them back away from the ward and the ward isn't directly on your person. It's floating back a little bit. So ward is kind of stinky. Agility, 10% dodge chance, not that useful. Momentum, not that useful either. These all kind of just suck. <laughs> unfortunately we have the blessing tree which is actually very strong um this is a very good perk because it, it just gives you it gives you the holy shield perk at the start of the run and then it also regenerates your shield faster too which is really nice this is a good one this is a good one healing also not bad if you're playing like diamond you want one you might want to go healing over blessing but beyond that you probably want to go blessing here if you're being super optimized for a high kill count run, I usually play healing because I, I kind of don't want the, the blessing perk to begin with. It's a little complex. We don't have to go into it right now, but that is a thing to keep in mind. And then we have Premonition, which is a new perk that was added to the game. I'll be honest. I already forgot what both of these replaced, but these also suck. <laughs> so I don't care about these. Having your dodge chance cap increased, generally not that relevant. Uh still still very stinky so there is that as well and then we already talked about this quite a bit we have growth which is kind of goaded we have body and soul which is now maybe a contender and then we have windshield which is also interesting but to me not that useful i don't know these two i'm very interested in personally we'll see which one reigns supreme um and let's talk about weapons real quick too so some weapons i didn't talk about here in general revolver it's okay Good on, like, Yuki. Good on, like, Luna. In general, is fine, but nothing super interesting. The evolutions are all kind of boring, too. Um, just, kind of, just kind of a weird one. Just kind of a weird one in general. We have the shotgun, which is just an unbelievably strong weapon. I think you can beat the game with any character with this gun. Uh, I mean, you can do that with pretty much any weapon with any gun, but this one, I think, is kind of a breeze. I think the shotgun is just one of the best weapons in the game, bar none, and it works on pretty much every character. Crossbow, a little bit of a weirdo. Um, you can play this on... I don't know. <laughs> like I said before, the Abbey build, you can do that with it. Um, flame cannon makes, you know, a lot of these are pretty obvious. You know, you know what we didn't talk about too much? We didn't talk about the magic bow, really. The magic bow, I think it's supposed to be played for like an on-hit build now with someone like Spark. Again, be careful about crashing your game because you made too many projectiles. Um, we've got Salvo Knife, which is one of the newer weapons. Again, a little bit of an oddball. I don't know who really should use this. This is kind of just a generalist weapon too, so you can put it on Shauna, you can put it on Diamond, etc. It just does good damage. You can put it on Raven. And then the watering gun is a weirdo gun. I actually, one of my favorite builds for this is actually an Abbey spin build because one of the evolutions drastically increases the fire rate and the range of the gun. So it ends up being a really good on-hit effect build weapon. And uh, yeah, that covers just about everything. I, oh man, this video is like an hour long, huh? I didn't think it would be that long. Couple, couple other advanced, let's do some quick advanced tips, right? If you are, let's just say, Let's just say you're you're trying to win on Darkness 15. A couple things to think about. My general list for easy to hardness as far as the maps go. Forest is the easiest map. Pumpkin Patch is middle difficulty. And Temple is the hardest map. General rule of thumb is that all of the maps, for some reason, they all get their most difficult at the 9 minute mark. So something to keep in mind is that the game's going to get a lot harder there. Once you get past that 9 minute mark and into like the 8 and 7 minute mark uh, zone... It should be pretty smooth sailing from there. It usually doesn't get too much harder after that point. Um, what else can I give you? Just This is a little bit of a more advanced tip, but be mindful of which perks you're taking and make sure you don't add too much bloat. Like I said before about the summon perks, right? If you take a ghost friend and you don't need ghost friend, you don't care about summons, um, you will be adding the uh, frenzy perk and the uh, trainer perk to your perk pool, right? 
So you're going to be, you know, generally when you take a perk, you add two perks by default. Uh, when you take the first perk in a perk tree, I should say, right? When you take Power Shot, it puts Big Shot and Splinter into your into your perk pool, right? Be mindful of that. If all of the perks do literally nothing for you, take the perk that adds the least bloat to your bloat pool. Very important thing there to keep in mind. And then, I don't know. Corny, but just have fun with the game. Try try stuff out. See what does work. See what doesn't. It's a, it's a good game. And I like it. And hopefully, hopefully you've had fun with it so far. And hopefully this video helps. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. Whatever. Have a, have a good one. Goodbye.